Coming up on show 647, Audi reveals the e-tron Sportback, Google Maps could let you pay for charging, and the Karma Rivero GTS. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to EV News Daily. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story that I can find online to try and save you time. There's loads going on today. It's a packed old show. Uh, There's a little bit of everything in here today as well. I think you'll like today's edition. Thank you to myev.com for helping me to put this show together, to support the show to help it grow as well and thank you if you've shared this show or maybe you've uh, helped promote it online or something if you are going online sometime today check out myev.com they are connecting ev buyers ev sellers ev curious and everyone that i've missed out in that in the usa myev.com so the verge revealed this morning about audi's second electric car the e-tron Sportback. Audi just pulled the wrappers off their e-tron Sportback, the company's second full EV at the 2019 LA Auto Show. Well, I mean, technically not their second full EV. There have been some other cars along the way. We'll call them um, proof of concept. Wasn't there a full electric Audi R8 years ago? They got like a million dollars or something. They made a handful of them. Anyway, you know what I mean if I'm making a, a few shortcuts. It's the full, the second full proper EV. And it appeared at the 2019 LA Auto Show, coming to Europe in the first half of 2020, so sometime before June 30th then. Uh, and the top tier version of the new premium EV is going to come with 277 miles of range. That's 446 kilometres of range. And that is on the WLTP European way of measuring it. Powered by dual electric motors, total power output is 265 kilowatts. In horsepower terms, 350, a slightly less powerful version of the Sportback, and it's going to have a smaller battery, does come uh, later in the year. Going to start at about $80,000. 70,000 euros ish rough figures according to TechCrunch today Audi delivered 18,500 e-trons globally since they launched it which was kind of March time back at the beginning of this year when the vehicle first came to market since then almost 20,000 of them are on the roads Audi plans to offer two variants of the vehicle the Sportback 50 and the Sportback 55 The Sportback comes to Europe, like I say, first half of 2020. And the 55 coming to the US, fall 2020, they're saying at the moment. Now, the Audi e-tron Sportback has what the uh, article in TechCrunch calls an 86.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. So I'm not sure what they're referring to there, the 95 kilowatt hour pack. And that's usable, do you think? Because the 95 is gross, and Audi save a ton of the battery at the top end and bottom. You don't get to use 95. So I wonder if when TechCrunch say it comes with an 86.4 kilowatt hour battery, uh, whether that is the big battery, but that's the usable? I don't know. I'm going to research that a little bit more when I've got some more time later. Uh, it's going to have, like I say, 277 miles of range. That's 446 Ks. And one thing that's curious, the EPA estimate hasn't been confirmed yet, but... The numbers are going to be lower. Uh, The company is targeting an EPA range of 220. That is beating quite by quite a long way, actually, the range of the regular e-tron. The regular e-tron gets 204 miles on EPA. They're aiming for 220. And that is because the sportback shape of this, they say, leads to a lower drag coefficient. Some more good news coming about the 2019 Audi e-tron. The first full electric from Audi has now earned its US uh, NHTSA NCAP rating. The new car assessment program's maximum overall safety rating of five stars in the latest series of tests. And additionally, what you get on the vehicle is standard automatic emergency braking. That is offered as part of Audi's pre-sense Now, the pre-sensing uses a front-mounted camera. The e-tron will brake at speeds up to 52 miles an hour if it detects a pedestrian or bicyclist in front of the vehicle, and it will bring the vehicle to a full stop when travelling at speeds under 35 miles an hour based on the AAHS test. So congratulations to everyone who put that Audi e-tron together. It has aced 
the safety tests. So congratulations to everyone in the Audi e-tron team getting a top-notch five-star safety rating for the e-tron. And uh, not for the sport back, I don't think, but well, that, why would that be any any different? It's basically exactly the same car uh, with a different body on it. What do you think? Does the sport back make you more excited about the e-tron? Is it a car that you would now consider that you wouldn't have done before? I will say now that the Audi e-tron is, please don't shoot me down, the nicest EV of all the big mainstream EVs, the the nicest place to be inside the cabin. And that is not to say that I don't understand the relative pros and cons and strengths of all the Tesla range and the Mercedes-Benz EQC, Jaguar I-Pace, etc., etc. But I do think that the inside of a of a modern Audi it's just a really, really lovely place to be. And the e-tron is a fabulous place to be. Very, very marginally ahead of the uh, of the Mercedes-Benz EQC. E-tron's utterly lovely. And yes, I know people will say about the, the range being pretty poor, the car being incredibly heavy, and actually not having access to much of that 95-kilowatt-hour battery pack. All are valid counterpoints to what i just said but i do think they have got their interior design language and styling and choice of materials just i mean look if i could afford one there would indeed be one sitting on the driveway outside okay let's talk google maps right now google maps recently added all of the ev chargers for many areas now google maps 10.3 for android has got some bits of code which have been uncovered by xda developers.com website that suggest it will support making payments straight from the google maps app the website says that these features are not yet live in google maps and it's only the app for android we'll probably see an announcement from google soon it could be days, it could be weeks, though. The last time Google Maps was updated with a new EV-related feature, that was in April. They added the real-time availability of charging ports. With new electric vehicles on the way, Google Maps is long overdue for new functionality. And this would be very, very interesting to see how they implement it, how they do it. Maybe you have a Google account on your Android that is already set up with some sort of payment account. I mean, I tend to live in the Apple universe quite a lot, but I do use more and more Apple Pay, even for micro transactions. Yes, I'm looking at you, vegan sausage roll from Greg's for a pound. And I tend to use that a lot. So if I already already had my card details stored in my phone and I was using an app on that to not only navigate where I'm going to, but then also pay for my charge. That would be incredibly convenient. So we will watch that story. Let's show Toyota some love. I know I pick on them, but they bring it on themselves with their stupid self-charging hybrid nonsense. Uh, The 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime, that's a plug-in hybrid. And this is the company, by the way, Toyota, that run ads in this country saying we choose not to plug in. And yet outside of this country, they make the RAV4 Prime plug-in because they choose to plug in. Their marketing department needs a good old shake-up from the very top. However, at the LA Auto Show, uh, they don't have much in the way of visual differences to show off with the new RAV4, but the spec sheet does get updated. According to Autoblog, there's now uh, a horsepower figure that exceeds 300. Wow, that's pretty pretty good for a, for what is a Toyota RAV4. Uh, 302 horsepower. Toyota says it goes 0 to 65.8. The RAV4 Prime does 90, sorry, 39 miles on battery alone. That's okay. That's a ballpark figure. Anything more than about 30, 25, 30 is good for a modern day plug in hybrid. And it's better than anything else, really, in that price range. Okay, so you've got the Polestar 1, which will do under 100 miles, but that is mega money. Uh, you've got the Chevrolet Volt, Honda Clarity in that sentence. Uh, the Even the Prius Prime does 25 miles. So a new RAV4 could be the car for you if you want a plug-in hybrid. But I must remind you that Toyota is the company that chooses not to plug in. A fire broke out recently, and it was like catnip to any website that wanted to talk down Tesla. Yes, we will bring up our old friends at CNBC here for jumping on the opportunity to say, fire, supercharger, Tesla, end of the world. Well, a fire was reported to have been caused by a Tesla supercharger at a store in New Jersey, but 
Local fire officials saw those reports and had to intervene and point out that Tesla had nothing to do with the fire. According to Electric, the spokesperson had to tell CNBC the issue was nothing to do with the supercharging station. It was actually, according to Matthew Palmieri, who works for the fire department District 5, telling Automotive News uh, that Jersey Central Power and Light had a problem. It was with the transformer. It was near the supercharger station. And no, it was nothing to do with EV charging. Let's move on. The Karma Rivero is debuting a slightly new updated model, the GTS, and it's got more range. Knocks half a second off the 0-60 sprint. The Rivero GTS requires 3.9 seconds with the accelerator pinned to the floor. 130 mile an hour top speed. According to Motor1.com, the Rivero GTS will do 380 miles because it uses a range extender, a BMW sourced three-cylinder, same one in the i8. To generate the electricity that charges the battery, fully charged, it'll do 80 miles on electric power alone before the Rex kicks in. And throughout all of that, total output of the motor stays the same as the current one, the GT, 536 horsepower, which makes the performance enhancements of the GTS, which they've done with efficiencies and electronics, all the more impressive. Well done to the team there. Staying with Motor1.com, an eagle-eyed Tycon EV Forum member, just posted a copy of the Porsche Taycan's California Air Resource Board, the CARB certificate. Now, this is not the EPA range. It's the CARB certificate. And it does hint at the Taycan's real-world electric range. The document reveals the Taycan Turbo and the Turbo S doing 281 and 282 miles, respectively. So, you know what? Let's call it about 280 miles, officially. However, this wouldn't be the first time that the CARB certificate actually exceeds EPA estimates. The board certified the I-PACE, the Jaguar I-PACE, at 3.34. EPA, 2.34. There's a significant chance the EPA range of Tycon Turbo and Turbo S will be a lot lower and maybe close to the estimates that many people are giving it, actually, in the real world, 200 miles. And that's will have to be a subject for another day because we don't know yet. Let's talk question of the week, should we? Thanks to myev.com. If you were marketing for a new EV, how would you do it? What would be on the TV ad for an electric car if you were the head? I mean, Tesla don't market. But if you were the head of marketing at Tesla, how would you do it? Would you run TV ads? What would be in them? Uh, Would it be a typical car advert full of just beautiful people driving up a mountain road and someone looks at someone else and the other person looks back and you know that if you drive this car you'll have more sex no i didn't think that would be in the tv ad that is typical car maker manufacturing the car is lucky if it gets a look in these days uh but many car makers are gonna have to rethink how they advertise and market their car so how would you do it tell me email me hello at evnewsdaily.com you can always leave a comment on YouTube because we make a video of this podcast and put it online without the pictures, I should say, uh, or on Facebook as well. Well, thank you to the 251 patrons of the podcast who indeed do keep me going. If you would like to uh, add your name, add your name to the list, make a contribution. Uh, Patreon's the website, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. Then do a slash then type in EV News Daily. You won't be surprised to hear. My premium partners are Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, and Avid Technology. Well, there's a big old archive of shows. If you're a glutton for punishment, you can go through some old ones. 646 of those. The new ones, so that you are in touch with what's happening in the EV world, are free to download every single day. If you're a subscriber, come and say hi by searching EV News Daily. I'm in all the usual places. Have a wonderful day. Catch you soon. Remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.